We now present a conversation with Professor Anil Kumar. In conversation with him is Professor G. Venkatraman, former Vice Chancellor of the Sri Satya Sai Institute of Higher Learning. So, Anil Kumar Garu, welcome to the studios of Radio Sai. Normally, I begin by asking our visitor or guest, shall I say. You are not a guest, you are not a visitor, you are one of us. By asking them to introduce themselves. In your case, that is not necessary because you are, I won't say next only to God, you stand next to God so often. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, uh, I think uh, most of us don't know how you first came to Swami. So maybe you could tell us very briefly how you came to Swami. There is something that we always want to know because each person is drawn to Bhagawan in a different way at the right time by Him. Of course, He does everything. He pulls the string. We want to know how He pulled the string in your case. Sir, I am Anil Kumar from the state of Andhra Pradesh and I belong to Brahma Samaj founded by Raja Ramohan Rai. And our families have been following this faith, Brahma Samaj, for the last three generations. What is special about this Brahma Samaj? Brahmos don't have idolatry. Mm -hmm. It believes in fellowship of faiths, mm -hmm. inter-religious faiths, mm -hmm. congregation worship. It does not accept caste system. It believes that all religions are equal. And it also worked for women's emancipation. So everything that is in Vedanta is there. In other words, Raja Ramon Rai is called prophet of modern India. Very good. Of And both of my grandfathers happened to be Brahmo missionaries mm -hmm. who sacrificed their lives. Mm -hmm. But it is only in the year 1970 I came to Swami for the first time mm -hmm. because of some problem at home. Mm -hmm. That's the my <laughs> wife was sick and I took her around... Uh, 13 doctors almost spent thousands of time, money, rupees of money. But after coming to Swami, she had a total cure. But being interested in philosophy since my childhood, mm. having been brought up by my mm. grandfather, Naturally. I started reading his literature mm. and I found that Baba explains Brahma so much better than Raja Ramon Rai himself. No, after all, he is the source, <laughs> so there is no surprise in that. So I believe that I am a staunch Brahmo now than ever before. Yes, that's what Swami always says, be a good Christian, be a good Muslim, be a good Jew, whatever, etc. Now, uh, you are a very good teacher, and you also know a lot about how Swami, as the supreme teacher, molds students. So I am going to ask you some things, some questions relating to that. In particular, I want you to share with all of us and, of course, our listeners, the thrilling experience about Kodekanal. It is said that Kodekanal is Swami's playground, whereas Prasanthi Nilam is his office and Vrindavan is his home. Uh, you have been to his playground many times. How many times? Oh. At least six. Oh, that's pretty good. And I suppose many more are in store for you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Uh, it seems to be a very, very uh, extraordinary event and uh, an event with a purpose. So you may like to tell us about the various aspects relating to the Kodaikanal trip, starting from the beginning. I won't uh, put any constraints on you. You know the whole works. You tell us like it was or it is. Well, sir, Swami selects students who follow him to Kodai Canal each year. And the selection is based on their performance here in the college, academic, their conduct, their devotion, their excellence in sports and games, their talents in singing, the fear, and also the dramatics as well. All talented students who are highly devoted are selected by Bhagwan to follow him, besides few other teachers also. Mm. The Kodekanal is such a beautiful place. If I am to say how a paradise would be, well, that could not be anything other than Kodekanal. Mm. The description of a heaven or a paradise in any scripture mm. of any religion would certainly agree with the life with Bhagwan there in Kodekanal. When does Swami go to Kodekanal typically? Usually he starts on 4th of April. Oh, it's as precise as that. 4th of April and returns by 5th of May. Hmm. Roughly about a month he spends there. Hmm. 
but there were occasions when he stayed on 6th of may also mm. where we celebrated easter on that day there mm. in kodaikanal mm. that had happened twice i believe mm. kodaikanal is most interesting because mm. swami is very very close to boys mm. and boys can learn many many things from him i suppose boys also are close to swami very 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 intimate now how many hours a day typically is with them sir immediately after breakfast mm. he spends an hour with them mm. and then bhagwan goes to the devotees and grants them That's interviews true. and boys will just go around the lake mm. and they return by 9:30 mm. from 9:30 to 11 o'clock again swami talks to them 9:30 to 11 second talk mm. then after lunch mm. and we have tea around 2 o'clock mm. and swami talks to boys again from 2:30 till 4 o'clock mm-hmm. and 4 to 5 public meeting where boys also sit there mm-hmm. and after the public meeting swami talks to the chosen devotees and students again it's something like an eco ses- session public meeting means uh, discourse also a discourse mm-hmm. there in the mandir there uh, for all the devotees coming from different so from parts from morning to evening swami is talking at least five discourses a day my god on, on the average four exclusively for students and it's also wonderful how swami treats them and uh, he inquires about their families their, their children their brothers okay sisters. let's start from you know bangalore he always starts from bangalore yes, yes, yes. Uh, it must be pretty exciting to go to kodaikanal let us start from there tell us everything about how you go from bangalore to kodaikanal <laughs> well what he does is a, there is one air conditioned big van here mm-hmm. air conditioned with cushion seats and everything a sink behind mm-hmm. and swami tells all boys to get into that uh, van and uh, tins and tins loads of sweets and hearts and uh, eatables apart from fruits plenty one can go on eating until they reach kodaikanal <laughs> neck deep very funny and as we start going not less than 15 to 20 places bhagwan gets down on his way to kodaikanal en route kodaikanal for because the tamil nadu mm. is full of sai devotees all over mm. every village in tamil nadu mm. has sai center mm-hmm. so along the highway devotees raise a huge pandal mm. they all sit there doing bhajan oh. and swami gets down there and takes harati and blesses all the devotees makes a quick round and gets back into his takes car takes letters also takes letters and smiles and says how are you and gets back into the car and the convoy proceeds so how long does it take you to go from bangalore to kodaikanal with stops for lunch <laughs> yes no. we start around 5 o'clock there in uh, uh, bangalore and reach kodaikanal 5:30 or 6 in the evening 12 hours 12 hours mm. to stretch and there are certain important places like dindigal mm. uh, salem mm. coimbatore mm. where audience roughly about 25000 people 25, gather 000. waiting for bhagwan mm. the other centers will have not less than 1000 mm. or 2000 but these big towns where bhagwan uh, addressed devotees long back number yes, of yes. in the they, early days yes they they assemble in very very large number mm. and then swami reaches kodaikanal there he gives to every boy a sleeping bag where they just get in and uh, put on the zip <laughs> and we don't know whether it's a gunny bag of rice or a boy sleeping inside <laughs> like and then no sleeping bags are very modern we were <laughs> nylon and so nylon. on so and the next morning he distributes them toothbrush toothpaste shaving cream mm. after shaving lotion the blades the razor towels new dress cameras what not one suitcase load of <laughs> gifts of daily needs and certain thing monumental presentations that we feel like preserving for the posterity so you can go without any luggage and luggage. accumulate a lot of luggage or take one suitcase bring back with us three suitcases <laughs> so what happens to less luggage <laughs> <laughs> and then the sumptuous meal we have the the breakfast we have three items and lunch 10 items tea uh, afternoon tea four items dinner 10 items tell oh. me anil kumar gar after eating all this how do you manage to stay awake through all those five sessions when swami speaks <laughs> because swami speech is always like appetizer just oh. as we feel like listening to him more that will be followed by eating more and more later <laughs> so food for the stomach food and for food the head thought. food for the heart yes oh god yes. Mm. and uh, also at times he takes boys to 
certain distant places on a picnic mm-hmm. where he almost plays with boys he goes on singing with boys all funny things happen uh, uh, does it remind you of krishna and gopalas i think that that's all action replayed as you call it something like action rewinding Except the tape uh, for the so called <laughs> age difference of the physical bodies so one crosses all the age barriers and he materializes certain things hmm. i know sir hmm. one year he materialized the ring worn by sri ramachandra mm. presented by his father dasharatha oh dasharatha gave dasharatha gave mm-hmm. the white stone mm-hmm. and then he smiled looked around mm-hmm. and materialized another ring green stone ring mm-hmm. presented to ramachandra by his father in law janaka, janaka. So i am told these rings are very big very big mm-hmm. i said swami it almost fits uh, of the size of my waist here mm-hmm. how is such a big ring swami mm-hmm. said Ramachandra personality in those days is such mm. Ajanuba mm, very tall stage very tall that's what it is 8 uh, feet or something 8 you know? feet and he materialized Mangala Sutra also mm. the sacred threat of Sita Mata mm. and I also seen Swami materializing the chain of Ravana also Ravana with 365 Sivalingas 365 Sil- Sivalingas mm-hmm. and at the center 3 Sivalingas mm. down below where you have the uh, pendant mm. three mm. large sivalingas mm. one yellow one green one blue what happens to these and all 362 gold, gold and the three at the center mm. crystal large size uh, Uh, Shavalinga, so, worn by Ravana Sura. So what happens to these jewels after he... These he things, they go back to Sai stores. <laughs> <laughs> they both go back to source. He also materialized the golden deer that uh, that has drawn the attention. You are allowed Sita to Mata. touch these things? We are allowed to touch these things. Uh-huh. And sir, I have also seen on another occasion, Swami said, tomorrow hmm. we will have hmm. the wedding function of Balarama and Revati. Achcha. And he invited all guests to attend lunch. Mm-hmm. Oh, sumptuous lunch. And in the afternoon, he went on speaking about Balarama and Revati Kalyana. That is never talked about. We, I didn't even know that Revati was uh, married to Balarama. And at the end, he materialized such a thing, sir. Mm-hmm. An arch mm-hmm. with diamonds in three to four rows. My God. An arch. Hmm. At the center... How big was the arch? How many centimeters? Uh, uh, I can show this much. 15 centimeters? At least. My God. And at the center of the arch, there's a gold chain hmm. to which uh, is hanging a swan mm-hmm. with eyes very clear, hmm. no beak very clear, stomach, you can see very transparent and translucent, hanging. My God. And then everybody started looking at it. Swami came and said, Hey, look, look deep, look deep. Mm-hmm. When I started looking, there in the stomach of the swan, mm-hmm. we find Bhagavan Baba in the reclining posture. Ah, uh, this is... Uh, in the stomach of the swan. I see. He said, you see, this this is what it is. That like, also has... Uh, like uh, like Narayana. Like Narayana. Like Narayana. Like Narayana. This Ananda Sai in the reclining posture in the stomach of the swan. <coughs> that also I have seen. Such a fantastic thing. And he has also materialized Chudamani. Mm. Uh, a, a thing that brought, uh, Hanuman brought. Yes, from Sita. Has a kind of identification mm. that he is from the father, Sri Ramachandra. To report back to the mother. To show, he, to establish his credibility. He has shown that Chudamani also. So how do, do, how, how do boys, they, they must be just transported very, a different way. They all, they come very, very close. Swami, Swami, let us see, let us see, let us see. <laughs> and everybody touches Abba, somebody kisses. And then all devotees of Swami, we want to see. And he will keep it on the table. Mm-hmm. So that everybody can guess, photographs can be taken. Mm-hmm. And some of them are here in our museum also. I see. Yes. Fantastic. And um, can you recall some really uh, moving incidents or spectacular incidents or heartwarming incidents because there must be a few of these things well there there was one student sir from the state of kerala mhm yeah, swami started how showing long, how long how long ago was that about 6 to 8 years okay, back okay 6 to 8 swami was showing special mm-hmm. concern for him mm-hmm. we were doubting why mm-hmm. and in fact i was even jealous also mm-hmm. he materialized ring for him mm-hmm. chain for him mm-hmm. a watch for him <laughs> as if the whole trip is meant for that boy well i was feeling so bad swami you can give me one watch why not why not and some other stores certain other boys why the special attention to this boy after few days he materialized a pair of earrings to that boy earrings earrings well, ladies, don't wear that, uh, ladies only wear girls how is that he materialized earrings for this boy i didn't understand mm-hmm. 
and fourth day he metal is another set of earrings to the same boy mm. so i mean i have three daughters you can give me why to that boy <laughs> why to that boy after all an unmarried fellow then after a week mm. his swami started giving his discourse some people started questioning why swami is showing special concern mm. some people are also doubting why i gave earrings to that boy they do not know that boy lost his mother long back i have been watching him crying sitting in a corner mm. i called him close by and inquired what all that had happened that led to the death of his mother and he has two sisters her mother's wish was mm. to present gold earrings to the daughters before that is materialized she died i am his mother i am their mother so who will care for them so i metal these earrings to the boys you don't understand what i do whatever i do whatever i say has got a deeper significance and inner meaning and the boy's father out of frustration he wanted to commit suicide oh my god i made him come here to ke promise him that he would not die that he would not make an attempt to die and uh, i am taking care of the family it is only since that day the boy started smiling that really touched my heart swami you are the mother of mothers dearer and nearer than the physical mother you care for them i am sure that none of us will experience that depth that intensity that gratitude that magnitude of love that we receive from but do, won't, from, won't you say anyone. that uh, swami has always that feeling towards only we are not able to see it we say swami is angry swami is not talking swami cannot be anything other than a loving yes because it is God. beyond human gaze mm. and estimation mm. after all human being is carried only in a narrow way limiting himself to the his own self uh, and the I, family i remember swami always saying he quotes krishna also It, god does not change it's only man who changes oh, one day he says god is good another day he says god is not so great <laughs> yes so the problem is with man not with god yes sir he gives one example also huh? while we go by train mm-hmm. we say bangalore is coming bangalore is coming mm-hmm. and while leaving from bangalore we say mm-hmm. uh, bangalore left left bangalore has not come <laughs> it has not left it is only i that <laughs> who went there and who left from there <laughs> okay now Are there any memorable incidents that you recall from the Kodikinal trip? Swami starts distributing peppermints and uh, uh, charcoal bars mm-hmm. and all things. Mm-hmm. And uh, suddenly he said, one day, mm-hmm. while I am distributing all these sweets and chocolates, mm-hmm. there is one fellow who is not eating. Mm-hmm. And he is keeping all, dumping them all mm-hmm. in his bag. Mm-hmm. come on boy search everybody's bag mm. as if it is something like income tax such <laughs> income tax rate mm. then i said softly bhagwan why trouble mm. i am yes i am not eating i am keeping them in the bag bhagwan said why do you do that mm. swami i have four children mm. they expect something from me mm. when i take back mm. these costly things most to precious things like peppermints and all the whatever you give that most valuable to all of us and children will jump in joy Swami said, "Oh, is that so?" He told everybody. Hereafter, you give Anil Kumar five, four for for, for his children <laughs> to be kept in the bag, one for him. Just as you feel happy as your children eat, I feel happy when you eat here. What Bhagwan said, how can I forget? I don't remember that anybody loved me more than Bhagwan Baba himself. This has the feeling with every devotee. After all, this is the chance that you have given me, sir, to express my experience. It has the experience with millions of the devotees all the world over. Now, uh, what does Swami expect in return for all this? This is a sort of a typical, you know, human question. I know God does not expect, but uh, let us hear what you have to say. Well, uh, He only wants us to learn from Him. Just as He loved us, we need to love the fellow men, the family and God. Because God is love and love is God. Live in love. Let me live in love. That is the message. Acha I am told that one year on Easter Monday day I think it was Swami distributed blankets to the poor and then he went out and all that sort of thing you were present at that time he went out and started yeah, can you tell us in his case yes, that seems to be a very uh, unusual and a moving yes, uh, incident so why don't you tell us about the blankets were distributed to all the poor people who assembled that day the Easter Monday day the 6th of may mm. and suddenly swami said mm. uh, let us start 
and he got into his car and the car and the convoy started moving he stopped here and there hmm. noticing poor people he got down and started personally distributing these blankets did he explain why uh, bhagwan said you should take every chance to care for the poor and the needy and the forlorn hmm. this is an example that everybody should learn from bhagwan not that you expect them to come to you you should go to them daritra narayana was it also because some of them could not come because they were disabled and yes sir yeah, you are very much true hmm. yes sir very much and not only that sir on our way to kodaikanal sometimes suddenly stops car he finds a beggar going over there hmm. he find he finds a village uh, woman mm. carrying the head load of uh, mm. the firewood mm. he stops and calls them mm. and gives them money and they never saw swami and they never know that he is sai baba he simply gives money like that well when i strangely look at him bhagwan says i don't want recognition i don't want publicity i cannot see these poor people suffering like that sir i think you'll be more thrilled and excited if i tell you another point bhagwan purchased that candy puffs mm-hmm. peach mitai mm-hmm. candy mm-hmm. puffs he purchased about 25 of them mm mm-hmm. and his car is full of these candy puffs <laughs> and he started distributing to all vips <laughs> they, they they looked at him and bhagwan said you know why i bought them mm. here in this kodai canal mm. there are some aged people mm. they cannot move about mm. and their children mm. they carry on their livelihood by selling these candy puffs so when i purchase them they go back home with the money and give to their parents and today is taken care of and from that day everybody started purchasing candy puffs because <laughs> swami said you should buy and you know i would give for 25 candy puffs after all he may have to pay 10 rupees or 20 but he gave him 500 rupees i said swami what is all this he said it is not the price it is the love it is not the price of the candy it is the love of bhagwan towards them that is really i was so happy and he also calls boys and tells them are boys look here you have got the tibetan girls from tibet mm, yes. and who will be selling these woolen wear mm. go to everybody buy so they will be happy here is sai baba and we have got very good business go to them they are poor people here they carry on their livelihood because of these sales only and then you must have heard of catch the uh, hats also ah yes a straw hats straw hats. in fact i think i have a photo of swami and uh, 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 narsimh murthy with straw oh, hats the straw hat. and swami got on purchased one and kept on his head <laughs> when swami wore that everybody whole kodaikanal full of this straw hat and bhagwan said you see what plenty of money they have they are very happy that's why all poor people they all wait for bhagwan because with swami lakshmi follows necessarily that will take care of their life so wonderful and he one day he called two servant maids very poor ladies and he gave them silk sarees mm-hmm. i was wondering what swami how did he pick them they were working there in the they kitchen? were working there they were they wash utensils oh, after okay. all mm-hmm. he gave them silk sarees i said swami silk sarees to servant maids swami looked at him and said when i give why do you cry like that are you jealous <laughs> no no swami they can't afford these silk sarees i don't know why you give them like that then he said why do you say that when they go and attend marriages when they go to the relations they will wear their sarees and say sai baba gave me this mm, it gives them lot of joy why do you think like that he said that is sai's love for everybody which is uniform on everyone he is always trying to make people happy, happy extremely mm-hmm. happy and the message is we should try to do the we same we should try to love tell me about uh, how swami uh, sort of subtly Uh, teaches the students because you say living with god is true education that's the usual saying so what are the lessons that he very subtly imparts and what are the lessons that we well, are supposed to learn if you are attentive sir he just uh, watches how every student conducts himself and immediately points X-ray out eyes. if there X-ray. is any mistake he will point <laughs> to begin with dining manners starting from dining manners mm-hmm. how one should conduct himself uh while one is in common dining mm. and then how to serve how to serve where there so many guests and usually our boys only serve mm-hmm. and how to serve and um, also how to receive guests how to extend hospitality how to talk to elders how to dress mm-hmm. all minute things these days 
parents also don't have time to observe <laughs> and teach they are busy in their own way but bhagwan being more than a parent cares for them with the result he'll be an excellent person that parents would not be able to identify whether the same child is staying with them <laughs> because when they left home they are a one form while they come back well totally transformed that is bhagwan's charismatic transformation did you feel it was kind of very strange and odd that god is doing all this <laughs> <laughs> because god comes down for both for reformation and transformation mm-hmm. reformation from the world side mm-hmm. transformation to the inner side the inner yes, side acha yes. now you say swami selects boys with talents how does he put these talents on display in kodaikanal bhajan obviously he must be doing yes sir uh-huh. during bhajan he will ask them to sing mm-hmm. and boys also to play on instruments mm-hmm. and boys who are gifted with the talent of public communication mm-hmm. and effective speaking they'll be asked to address and there are some things like kavi sammelan kavi sammelan tell us yes, about, uh, yes. about that kavi sammelan boys from such a sai university is very peculiar in the sense that we have students from all universities and few from overseas also and each student is talented and each student uh, makes a composition a poem or a song in his own language and we have all together about 15 languages or so and one day swami organizes this kavi sammelan assembly of poets mm-hmm. with their own renderings or compositions and swami will ask every boy come on sing a song or a poem in his own native language and swami starts explaining interpreting and translating <laughs> and correcting wherever they went translating wrong. also translating if it's also. a bengali poem he'll translate okay, all languages he translates <laughs> and then why does he need you <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because we don't know what language in which jesus spoke we don't know in which language ramachandra spoke and it is the good luck of the telugu language which is spoken by bhagwan it is the good luck of the language if not of the people <laughs> uh, that is uh, amazing now tell us a little bit about the picnics uh, because that must be something very picnic. unusual we don't see we get picked not <laughs> <laughs> he will pick few people to the picnic yes well uh, in a nearby the mountain area in kodaikanal he will take boys there with food packets mm-hmm. and then they will all sit in the sit in the form of a circle mm-hmm. and swami start joking on their dress mm-hmm. on their walking style mm-hmm. starts imitating them pointing their weaknesses mm-hmm. much uh, to the at the fun of everybody mm-hmm. it's a matter of light and delight to to know one's own mistakes <laughs> well he goes on pointing out and he says are well you says to one boy you are walking like almost like a lady and so that that boy will correct he will know how to walk from then onwards he will look at another boy and he will say well uh, what is you are so fat fatty better you just do some exercise no oh, everybody will laugh and there uh, there small slips are picked up mm-hmm. and on the slips are written various items mm-hmm. you dance mm-hmm. you sing mm-hmm. uh, you cut a joke like that mm-hmm. equal to the number of boys who squat in the form of a circle mm-hmm. and these slips are picked up by each and every one mm-hmm. and everyone will have to necessarily do what is written there everyone includes swami including swami <laughs> oh my god once it so happened professor sampath was there in the group uh-huh. and he got a slip professor sampath a grand great man an unparalleled unbeaten scientist of this country so very well known in national and international circles a man of ready wit and humor a personification of human values well that person of the stature professor sampath himself picked up a slip where it is written you sing a song <laughs> he said swami i am to sing a song swami said i can't help it that's what your slip says <laughs> swami can i be exempted no no you should do what then he started singing with all his hoarse voice he is not used to singing at all yes. and everybody started putting their fingers into their ears <laughs> plucking their ears so that they don't have to hear that so that had to the fun and frolic everybody well there were peals of laughter at that moment i i remember mm-hmm. professor sampath telling me this story <laughs> <laughs> He, he took it all in good style. Yes, he was a, a, oh yes, he was a very sporting person, very Wonder, jovial, wonderful man, very jovial. Man. So, if you were to summarize this extraordinary experience that Swami gives repeatedly to students, how would you summarize it? Well, there, sir, in Kodaikanal, we'll have number of opportunities 
to put any number of questions to bhagwan mm-hmm. covering all topics under the sun even films also oh my god even films also the films and film stars how they lead their lives you mean and <laughs> boys can ask such questions and why not oh, fantastic well because bhagwan himself starts explaining in those days mm-hmm. Uh, actresses like uh, Bhanumati, mm, yes. Lalita Padmani came yes. to Bhagawan, mm. Nagaya came to yes, Bhagawan, yes. mm. and many singers, uh, they come to Bhagawan, and he starts explaining that. A fellow like me, mm. with vast experience of watching uh, films, mm. naturally he is tempted to put some questions, <laughs> and then Swami also answers. <laughs> and uh, supposing if I dare to start singing one song, Swami immediately fill up the blanks, the rest. Ah, Swami, how do you know this song? he says i know before the composer starts writing <laughs> oh. okay so very subtly he says that he is the he source is of the everything source. very nice and today sir in mm. all films most mm. of films mm. and also on tele serials mm. we find swami's pictures hanging on the walls today mm. and swami's teachings also are put in the form of beautiful dialogues today mm. they are very popular swami's dialogues are very catchy very attractive to audiences what today. do you when you say swami's dialogues what do you mean by teachings that? his teachings, oh, teachings put in the form teachings, of dialogues the, oh i see yes. i see most of the films they have today how do the boys uh, change or get influenced by all this experience when once they go out with bhagwan they see thousands of devotees waiting for him that the first opportunity for boys to know how lucky they are those who have been waiting since the morning early hours and in the, the cold noon, in the cold in the cold till the noon to have just a glimpse of bhagwan well swami is moving in our midst unimaginable undreamt the first that's the first scene first reaction how lucky we are abba swami is spending time with us we are very fortunate number 2 and swami watches a boy eating one particular item there mm. and he sees to it that he is served with extra extra uh, <laughs> seconds once again so that he can eat more that particular item that he relishes there you will understand how he cares for I them. would be in trouble if i go to correct and i won't eat anything <laughs> how he cares for them and the the shirts that he presents exactly that suits him and the concern the love naturally be touched he might not have experienced that kind of love any time till then this brings up a transformation what shall i do in return for all that he does to me for all the time that he spends for me for all the concern and the love that i received how am i to repay how i to how am i to and what does swami gratitude? say about that swami what says i don't want anything from you i want you to get a good name for yourself and the institute for your parents and to the institution that is the way of expressing gratitude to bhagwan that's what it says do good be good see good is the quintessence of sai message it is so unimaginable we don't know whether the lord ramachandra ever did such a thing probably the vanaras had the thrill of his uh, being his proximity in their journey to sri lanka or uh, lanka sorry no sri lanka and uh, certainly we know lord krishna spent an extraordinary wonderful time with the gopalas we don't have to read any scriptures if we go to kodaikanal or even hear about it it is so wonderful it is said in the our tradition that hearing about the lord itself brings gives one redemption so i hope all our listeners who are listening to you would feel thrilled would besides be transport that, besides that sir mm-hmm. the variety of audience mm-hmm. national international, international covering the whole world Rama, I don't think he did. Yeah, <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. Variety of audience. No, that is true. Are Krishna from <clears> there? <throat> Globalization <laughs> hadn't taken place at that time. And then different cross sections of society. No, that's true. Engineers. Well, doctors. certainly we didn't have film stars in those of days. Of different age groups. How oh, cosmopolitan. <laughs> But uh, just imagine this broadcast will be going all over the world, oh. and so literally you are brought Kodaikanal experience to. thousands and hundreds of thousands of people so it's all my over pleasure so thank you we are much. very grateful to you from radio yeah. sai i'm grateful and we sir. hope uh, we will have more opportunities so after and your next kodai yeah. trip you are going to report here oh i eagerly look forward <laughs> to the opportunity so at least for that sake <laughs> i hope you will be taken this if yeah. thank, thank you thank you very much thank sai you, ram sir. sai, sai pleasure sai ram so sai ram and uh, welcome to you professor anil kumar we and i am sure the more the listeners much more than even we 
would be delighted to have you here and talking to us and sharing your experiences, wonderful experiences and so on. But before that, I want to ask a personal question for me. We recorded a conversation, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe six, seven months ago, and you are visiting us again in the studio. Do you find any difference? Oh, there's a notion of difference. <laughs> I wanted you to say that. <laughs> and uh, it's all beyond all our estimates and expectations. The studio right now more or less looks like typical Doordarshan center or TV center. There in either in Delhi or Madras or Hyderabad. Pakka professional type. The sort of facelift given to the studio, really fantastic. I see the lights and blue curtains, excellent matching, the light blue flooring, dark blue curtains, ash color top. What about the equipment, and, sir? What about the equipment? And the lights everywhere and the equipment ultra modern. And the boys, quite young. And you being the captain of the team, <laughs> quite dynamic too. Thank God you didn't say I'm old. But the reason I asked you to make a comment about it is this. You know, eight months ago, I wouldn't have dreamt that such a thing was going to exist. I don't know about you. And my perp what I'm wondering is, do you think there is some master plan behind all this? Because it has sort of suddenly come from nowhere. Uh, definitely there is master plan because a uh, few years ago... I was here hmm. and uh, I was giving talks to uh, foreigners. Oh, in this building, yes. In the very same building. Yes. And I never thought that it would take a shape of this, what it is today. But in between, there is an intermediate stage too. When I visited this studio earlier, well, it was altogether different. But now, uh, well, I don't think that I would be able to describe in full because I have so much machinery around being typically a biologist. I would not be able to describe them or name them either. I feel that I'm in a different place. I wonder whether this is Puttaparthi or something else. It is on <laughs> that That's level. a good point. Incidentally, as a biologist, you would agree we have evolved. <laughs> <laughs> yes, isn't it amazing that Puttaparthi, which, that we read about in books like Anyadashanam Nasti, is something very different from the kind of Puttaparthi we are taking so much for granted? Exactly, sir. I think the the author is still alive <laughs> of uh, that Anyadha Sanan Nasti. Yeah. If she were to go around, yes. well, I don't think that she would be still conscious. She would faint because those days there was no accommodation, hmm. nothing whatsoever. People just adjusted with what I don't know whether you had remember had Arthur, the trees. Arthur Shulman came in 1968. Oh, Shulman, yes. Yes, and I remember the first sentence in his book. He says, Puttaparthi is 160 kilometers from Bangalore and 10 minutes past the Stone Age. <laughs> now, you know, we have Hollywood... That man was from Hollywood. We have Hollywood people working here. Yeah, <laughs> They're doing camera work, audio work and all yes. that. And now, sir, even now, uh, this Puttaparthi, apart from this, yes. those are the villages that we see. Yes. Apart from this, as yes. we reach this place, yes. we have to pass through those villages. Yes. This is altogether something different, as if it is transplanted from somewhere else, <laughs> from paradise, something like that. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, I'm so glad. Uh, all this is a way of, you know, making you come here again and again and share your wonderful experiences thank of which you have so you. much. I love to be here again. Yeah, again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, I, don't, I have a big list of things to ask you, and maybe I should begin by asking you to speak about some old-timers, because uh, they played such a vital role in shaping the things to what we now take for granted and what we see. They were the pioneers, and it's uh, appropriate that we remember those pioneers. One of them whose name I've heard you mention often is Mr. Rama Brahmam. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So, I would like you to tell us a little bit about Mr. Rama Brahmam, starting with when you came to first know him. Well, K. Rama Brahmam mm -hmm. belongs to Krishna district, which is the neighboring district where I come from, Guntur district, mm -hmm. from the state of Andhra Pradesh. Well, I know him for the last 30 years at least. And I moved with him intimately ever since 
I took over charge as a principal uh, during my period of stay there in Brindavan, Whitefield Campus, Bangalore. Which year was that? 18, 1989. 1989. Yeah. He, uh, Mr. Ramabrahman was still there in Brindavan. Oh, so, well, he was the caretaker. Okay. Well, Ramabrahman used to visit me every day. Hmm. I was staying alone in the bungalow given to me at that time as my wife didn't join me and children were still studying engineering and medicine like that. Hmm. And Ram Brahman used to come to me every day and g- give a kind of a talk that would give me a sort of a boost. Pep talk. A, a pep talk. Philip to go. You mean you further. needed a pep talk every day? <laughs> <laughs> the, in the beginning stage, I didn't know how to work with Swami, what it meant. Mm-hmm. And Rama Brahman, incidentally, I may tell you, sir, served as the most faithful worker of Sai. Mm-hmm. A great devotee par excellence. Yeah, incidentally, when did Mr. Rama Brahman first come to Swami? you have any idea about that? He said that he stayed with Swami for 30 long years. That is what he told you in 1989. 89. That means more or less from 59. Yes. And uh, when he came to Bangalore... And he was in Bangalore all the in time. In Bangalore all the time. So he was a Bangalore man, not a Puttaparthi man. Not a Puttaparthi man, sir. Mm. And uh, it was all uh, a forest in, the, in those days, he was telling me. And no buildings whatsoever. And Swami used to spend a lot of time in Brindavan. In Brindavan. Those excepting the central old building. Mm. There's no other building whatsoever. And they had to move. Most of the snakes were just moving hither and thither there. Mm. And they moved in the midst of snakes. Mm-hmm. No... Power, no lights as we find today. Only Swami's building at the center. But there are many, many things to learn from late Sri Ram Brahman, the caretaker of Brindavan. Ram Brahman is very important for more than one reason. Mm-hmm. The greatest character in Ram Brahman is this. He never considered his job as the caretaker of Brindavan, mm-hmm. not as uh, and the means to earn his livelihood, he considered it as his own. Mm. He always told me, listen Anil Kumar, mm. never consider this is your job. No. Never consider that college is a place where you work. Mm. Consider these things, they belong to you. That's your own property. Mm. Just as you would take care of your property, we expect you to take care of Swami's college the hostel, and we expect you to take care of the students as you would take care of your children. Mm-hmm. That is that spirit Ram Brahman had throughout. Mm-hmm. And the second he said, never ask any personal favor from Bhagawan. Mm-hmm. He knows everything. When you do his work, mm-hmm. he will do your work. What a fantastic statement it is. Well, to substantiate my statement, mm-hmm. Ram Brahman has two sons. Mm-hmm. And they, they used to visit uh, the parents there in Vrindavan. Whenever children come, mm. they stay outside along with the devotees. Mm. Rama Brahman never told Swami, mm. Swami, my son has come. But it is always Swami who always told him, mm. Ram Brahman, your first son is there, give him accommodation. <laughs> Ram Brahman, your second son is there, give him accommodation. This Ram Brahman told me, never ask any favor. He will take care of you. Mm -hmm. And you have to do your work. And third thing he said, a very great statement. I I asked him, Ram Ram, Ram, how is that you are so serious in front of Bhagawan? (laughs) I never saw you smiling Ah. and cutting a joke. I always see you standing like a military man Mm. with folded hands, with a long face. Why? He said, look here. I don't see Swami as you see Him. I observe three lines, parallel lines, that what you find on Sivalingam. Mm. I see three parallel lines on His forehead, Mm. Sivalingam. I see Him as Lord Siva. That makes me feel that that I am in front of God, that I cannot joke, I cannot smile, I cannot take in any easy way. That's why I always maintain that spirit, he said. Then, another point, he said, if you want to continue to stay with Swami, the one what I want to tell you is, 
to follow his instructions scrupulously no margin nothing words ever he gave an illustration from his own biography mm mm-hmm. swami it seems once commented mm. look here ram ramam what is that your wife is shouting too much <laughs> i hear her voice most of the people in mandir also hear her voice what is it this gentleman next day mm. dropped her dropped her back at home mm. in krishna district andhra pradesh mm. 17 hours drive from bangalore Mm-hmm. dropped her there and reported swami swami she is no longer here mm. you are free from her disturbing voice hereafter then after a week swami said when is she coming ram brahmam i don't know swami when is she coming i don't know this divine romance continued <laughs> for a long time finally bhagwan got vexed with him and said ram brahmam i'll send you out if you don't bring your wife here <laughs> so this man had to go and bring his wife and he said it was a choice between wife and bhagwan i have chosen bhagwan and not my wife this is from his own life isn't that uh, <clears throat> very similar to what swami often says about great uh, devotees of the past like prahlada or meera or uh, mahabali and so on and so it forth is, it is it so is so even in this kali age we have people like people of ram ramam type so in fact in all these examples <clears throat> i had not come across one choice between wife and god this is the first example <laughs> because all others we have an example and he also said we have to follow swami carefully and we cannot take anything for granted he gave one instance mm-hmm. Bhagwan asked him to wear his robe. What? To wear his own robe, ochre robes. The uh, the uh, the one that he wears. Yes. He asked Ram Brahma Brahmam to do that. Yes. He By asked the... Ram Brahm, "You wear my robes." By the way, what was his size? He, Ram Brahmam is well built man, hefty personality. Uh-huh. He said, "Swami, my hand won't fit into your <laughs> robes. How do you expect me to wear it? No, nothing to wear. Swami, please, please wear. No, nothing to wear." So why did Swami say that? I don't know. Then this man started wearing <laughs> with great difficulty. He could push his head <laughs> into his robe. Even that, he was almost breathless. <laughs> As Ram Ramam starts telling me, <laughs> with the tears in his eyes, <laughs> the robes started expanding. As he started wearing, it started expanding. Finally, it was a correct fit to his size. That's what Swami. Ram 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 said, "When he said you do it, he sees to it that everything fits." Was it properly. to sort of give Mr. Ram 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 a taste of his divinity? A taste of his divinity. That's what he always tells. Another example, he said. Once, Swami called Ram Ram Ram, "Come here." Mm-hmm. Bhagwan was staying there upstairs, and this gentleman was ca- having Dharma's flask in his hand. Mm. so he thought it would be improper to go with the flask so he went into the kitchen kept the flask walked leisurely climbed up the steps went to swami swami here i am i called you few minutes back not now better you go back <laughs> this had happened implicit obedience was it after 6 months what happened was brindavan hmm. uh they planned to have a bore well mm. and ram ramam was in charge of that mm. and several were at work they were uh, at work there a big bore well and they could not get water no, in spite uh, of uh, where where was the brindavan uh, campus sir mm. there in that uh, uh, wide campus on the left side of the college building uh-huh. and work was going on in spite of 20 feet 30 feet 30 feet depth they could not get water and ram ramam happened to pass by that way Mm. and several people said sir why don't you also take some crowbar and just help us in seva activity mm. at least in the hands of a devotee mm. we may get water now all our efforts are so far in vain you are grand old man of vrindavan come on sir take this crowbar mm. and just render some service this grand old man for how old is he at that time Uh, 70 70 70 he forgot his age limits mid mm. took the crowbar mm. started hitting on the ground mm. 
and water sprang up immediately but while returning he fell on the ground mm. the whole pant and shirt was dirty mm. then he it was time for him to report to bhagwan mm. slowly he went changed his dress mm. and report to bhagwan swami here i am mm. bhagwan said mm. look here ram ramam mm. when you fell down there mm. i immediately came to your rescue but some time back mm. when i wanted you to come to come up and report to me mm. you went into the kitchen mm. kept the flask there took some time to see me when i rush to help you you delay to see me you make delay to attend to my work mm. whereas i don't wait i immediately rush to the space to save you <laughs> this you must learn that's what uh, and he had not he told swami anything about this incident he has not told anything and he often tells devotees this is from my life experience you should learn just as we expect bhagwan to come to rescue immediately we should also do his work immediately without any delay no excuse whatsoever this is one example that uh, he often tells and ram ramam also has another experience suddenly swami said ram ramam hmm. your second son died just like that just like that don't tell your wife she'll be shocked both of you go to your native place hmm. finish off all that you are supposed to do and return this man along with his wife went to the native place by the time they reached his wife saw the dead body of her second son all these 17 hours this man kept quiet without divulging anything whatsoever why he was going why because swami said don't tell her mm-hmm. don't he didn't tell her and there the wife after having come to know that ram ramam knew this before she felt very bad why didn't you tell me why didn't you tell me and he replied look here i would have told you but swami instructed me not to tell you because you have to travel 17 hours as a mother you would not be able to bear that sight after finishing off all that they had to do in that connection both of them return to brindavan and his wife started crying oh god i lost my son and bhagwan said why do you cry he is with me swami he is with you yes he is in me bhagwan he is in you yes he is you want to see yes swami then bhagwan asked the couple to go into the interview room there they saw physically the second son sitting there who had been cremated who had been cremated already this he said this is bhagwan babu i could see my son my wife saw him when swami says he is with me he is in me it is not anything no, like figurative is, uh, expression <laughs> this is uh, very interesting apparently this is not the only time it has happened many others have had this kind of experience i was uh listening to or rather i was talking to the raja venkatagiri the present younger raja and he told me when swami first came to venkatagiri after keeping the family waiting for several years the first thing he asked the elder raja now no more the great man the big man yeah. what is it that you want and he said i want to see my mother who was dead and gone just like this yes, you want to see your mother no <laughs> you want to see your grandmother <laughs> you want to see your attagaru yes they could see them he said wait he just looked at the wall and called out her name and she stepped out from the wall and this man said we touched her she was there in flesh and blood we talked to her we touched her see that that's it fantastic the real is sir it's, it's, we, we don't uh, hear such things anywhere anywhere 
I mean, you can't. <laughs> Let us put it that way. It's very rare, extreme rare experiences. The problem is, uh, even though we hear, we forget it. We forget it. That's that's mm-hmm. it. That that's that is the destiny. And uh, Ram Brahmam gave another instance. It was an occasion when he had to attend uh, his granddaughter's wedding. Mm-hmm. Tirupati, I believe. He, he Ram Brahmam personally gave the invitation to Bhagwan. Bhagwan said, "You go." but still 15 days time ram brahma was expecting that bhagwan would tell him on 14th better you go and attend your granddaughter's marriage which falls on 15th something like that a day before but swami didn't say anything after the marriage was over he started inquiring ram brahma why did you not go <laughs> then ram brahma said bhagwan i take it positively i feel that you didn't want me to attend so i kept quiet without asking you bhagwan said good boy this is the sign of a devotee this is the sign of a devotee he was not for a change he was not for his relationships he was not for any business before Bhag- coming to bhagwan he was a very rich man is that right tobacco magnate and he didn't have time even to count the cash my god <laughs> that was situation and he was working here as a caretaker and how did he happen to come to swami as ill luck would have it he lost all the money all the money he was a beggar literally on the street mm-hmm. disowned by children at that time swami picked him up oh that's how he came to swami and has taken care of him for 40 long years his sons say sir we are ever grateful to bhagwan because he has taken care of our parents for 40 long years we never took care of them any time on the other hand we were their guests they they were never our guests during this period that's a very great thing i can also give you one more thing sir before uh, i say to any other thing later it was a time when jetty was the vice president of india mm-hmm. bd jetty bd jetty it was the time of indo he is the one who inaugurated that building i think hostel building yes, sir, yes, you sir. see his name yes. there he is an ardent devotee of bhagwan bd jetty yes. vice president of india i think he came last year also for, for darshan, darshan. Darshan cultural yeah. program then indira gandhi was the prime minister mm-hmm. it was indo pak war time war time 65 war or 71 war i don't know exactly okay one of indo pak war time indira gandhi <coughs> sent bd jetty all the way to seek bhagwan baba's blessings bd jetty came by a special flight and went straight to brindavan mm-hmm. it was evening 6 o'clock bhagwan already retired and jetty in the capacity of vice president of india with cabinet ministers and big convoy local authorities chief minister of karnataka in their midst bd jetty pleaded very humbly ram brahma garu i must report to prime minister before the sunrise what bhagwan said on this matter she sent me all the way to seek bhagwan's blessings please inform swami that i am waiting for him here i must immediately go ram brahmam said i am sorry sir you can take my head but you can never force me to go to bhagwan tap the door knock the door and request him to talk to you impossible when once bhagwan retires nobody dares to knock the door i am sorry if you want you can have my head that's all then bd jetty with folded hand said okay sir what am i to do now the vice president of india vice, what am i to do and ram brahman said hmm. i suggest you only one thing that is sit here squat on the ground and pray and pray say sai ram sai ram <laughs> in the sai ram shed sai ram shed you do it and swami will take it. this man said it 
and JT along with other cabinet ministers and convoy sat there repeating Sai Ram. What happened? Immediately after half an hour, Rama Brahmam hears the sound, a knock on the door mm. from Swami's room. Mm. Ram Brahmam, I am coming. Jetty is waiting for me. Tell him that I am coming. <laughs> and Swami came down, spoke to Jetty, gave him what all he wanted to tell him. This Ram Brahmam said, mm. had I not followed Swami's instructions, mm. Jetty would have been in trouble. And I would have been in trouble and it would have been a very bad experience for me. But because of this, the world could know, the world could know that here is Bhagwan who knows everything. The urgency of the situation, the need to talk to a person, when, where and how. None can force anybody on earth. Everyone will have to wait for Bhagwan, and Bhagwan will wait for none. He doesn't wait for anybody. That's what uh, uh, Ram Brahma used to tell me. Tell me, you have seen Mr. Ram Brahma in close quarters and interacted with him intensely. <coughs> and you also are seeing many people and you interact with some of them closely. Do you feel that the kind of devotees, loyal devotees that Bhagwan had in those days, are scarce these days or do you feel that even today there are people with that kind of uh, steadfast one-pointedness because Swami also talks about Kamavadani who gave up everything he refused to go uh, back home yes, yes. and so on yes. do you feel that the people who now are to be seen are different because of the change in the environment and climate or do you feel that Devotees are devotees always. Yes. Uh, there is decline in standards in every walk of life. <laughs> yeah, as teachers, as doctors, as engineers, as professionals. There is decline in standards, the values. Well, naturally, even in this field, such quality of devotees, number, is rather on the uh, lower side, on the, uh, this end, mm -hmm. this extreme, you know, where their number is less and less. Is it because they don't have these experiences or something else is the reason? They had intense love for Bhagwan, love first. And then and the experience. Then Today it's not so. Hmm. My intention, my motive, my desire, first. Devotion next. But in that case, devotion first. Any other desires or any other things, they come next. So priorities are different. You know, when you were talking about uh, Rama Brahman seeing Shiva all the time, I was very much reminded of uh, the recent uh, function that took place here in Sai Kulwant when the 30th anniversary of the Central oh, Trust was observed and celebrated. And uh, the words that Mr. Chiranjeevi Rao oh, said on that occasion were almost spoke. identical. Identical. I told him also. <laughs> oh, you so, told him. Uh, you said exactly fact, <laughs> what Brahman Brahman said. And he, is also, he was also very serious. Yes, he did. And he said... <laughs> A Charanjara words are still ringing in my ears when he said, Whenever I work, I feel that he is in me. Whenever I am there face to face, I feel that I am in the presence of God. God is with me when I talk to him. And when I work, I feel that God is in me. So with, he, with God for work purposes. In God, the God is in me in executional aspect. Oh, what nice speech he made. Both, yes, it's both it's the like statements that, you know, are, Abraham Lincoln saying, by the people, of the uh, people, yes, for yes. the people, by yes. God, for God, of God. <laughs> Incidentally, talking of that generation, I would like to share with you one or two observations which may be of some interest to the listeners. <clears throat> you know, in the first year we had Gram Seva. That is in the year uh, 2000, I believe. Mm -hmm. I was uh, going out with Mr. Chinjiro and Mr. V. Srinivasan every day. Mm -hmm. That was my group. Oh. And uh, he, he was uh, not doing the same sort of things that other people were doing. His mandate was to come back every day and tell Bhagwan, I have personally verified that people were happy. That was his one-pointed objective. And... Uh, I remember we were in Dharmavaram 
that was the last big uh, distribution activity and it was a massive activity and uh, by the time we came home that day it was 7:30 in the evening darshan and all were long over and at about 5:30 in the evening we were faced with a crisis situation in some railway colony there were not enough food packets so mr chinjeev rao went there and we went along with him somehow we managed to get some food packets and there was one group there and uh, he asked the group leader have all people been given yes sir we have given some people we have not given so many we need packets and all that and then he asked him how do you know they got sir i personally went and gave kept on asking how do you know they got <laughs> then i got the hint so we went into uh-huh. every house two of us and we asked did you get prasadam did you get prasadam and so on and we asked little boy uh, em babu laddu ichara are, are you happy and all that then i told this leader you see you didn't understand the significance of the question you have seen many times prasadam being distributed in prashant nilayam swami is watching all this and still he will come and uh, ask you did you get prasadam that is a paddhati it is a tradition it makes the person doubly happy certainly ha uh, and see that is what he was conveying to you that is your way of making people happy finding out personally it is not Understood. just like postman distributing letters yes, yes. it's not mechanical it's not mechanical yes. something personal and, touch and uh, there was another occasion you know he used to tell everybody to eat at 11 o'clock but he would eat only at 2:30 because i was with him uh and his job was to go and find out people who are left out and give once they told him there is a group there go there and we went there and this was a group living literally in a field the in the ground nut field they were migrant workers who had come from something like uh, 6 700 kilometers away in tamil nadu there was labor shortage and nobody was prepared to do this kind of work and they were there in the middle of the field hungry cold at night because you know it was october now where it was getting to be chill and he personally made sure they all got food packets and they all got clothes oh good it was, uh, re- because his mandate was make sure everybody is happy you have to come and report it he was very very particular about mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. so i learned a lot of lessons oh, and yeah. it's very nice to hear about another gentleman mm-hmm. of the same variety and tell me uh, do you know anything about mr kamavadani Uh, because we are accepting often... what i heard from bhagwan mm. i will okay I, tell I us about that bhagwan said few things about you must have seen Kamaudhan. him i saw him mm. uh, bhagwan have you said, talked to him yes mm. he said few things about uh, late kamavdhani kamavdhani is a great scholar in vedic literature i can say one or none can equal him is of that stature all vedas and most respected man in the state of andhra pradesh particularly east godavari a very rich man but he said goodbye to his family leaving all the property all his children grandchildren everybody and settled here in prashant nilayam that was I, long ago long ago it was he who started <coughs> teaching this vedak mantras hmm. vedic mantras to our students hmm. here and there was veda padashala in those days yes he gave training to students also in those days and he was in charge of all dasara celebrations mm-hmm. and no surprise if i say that at the time of dasara celebrations mm-hmm. you can easily make out kamavdhani's voice as against the voices of the rest there may be 100 people vedic priests but yet Kamavdhani's voice, golden voice, metro golden voice, <laughs> dominates, and Vedic mantras will have to be uttered like that. He's a scholar, great believer, and having come, he never went back. But it so happened, Bhagwan wanted him to follow him mm-hmm. in his trip to East Godavari. Mm-hmm. This man belongs to that place, <laughs> and the very village. to which he belongs to mm-hmm. is also included in bhagwan's program <laughs> deliberate See, this house swami planned <laughs> this man has not gone all the way all right let him go to his people and spend some time with them must have been bhagwan's idea and he took him along with him and took him straight to kamavdhani's house 
his house his house hmm. and everybody received them and swami gave nice talk also there and at the end of it children grandchildren of kamadani came and said look here you have come after a long time kindly stay back with us for a couple of days so that you can go and join bhagwan later this man said nothing doing i am leaving right now i am following bhagwan in his trip all over the district in east godavari i am not going to stay here and then he followed him what did swami say and swami just watching the drama <laughs> and appreciating the devotion of kamadani and he came straight and having come here he had no regrets for not having stayed for more than a day or so even less than that and one day he came and daily he used to report swami morning and evening take pad namaskar and all that one day bhagwan said you go home you don't have to come in the afternoon you don't have to see me in the afternoon come out and went did puja at home and had his food breathed his last no more that's why bhagwan didn't want him to come again he said the chapter was closed closed and i think and that too that happened to be a day when he performed sitaram kalyanam here in mandir having performed that holy wedding of sitaram kalyana excellently in vedic manner having had sumptuous lunch with all excellent items sitting there comfortably as if he caught into the flight nicely left this planet earth he was over 100 at that time over 100 at that time hmm? I, uh, Swami said about I mean these things about uh, Kamadani. <clears throat> well, uh, Professor Anil Kumar, I think I can go on and on and on, but uh, you must be tired. So let us stop here at this point, with the understanding that you are coming again and again and again till you run out of stories. But you can't run out of stories because you are always on the lookout for newer and newer stories and experience. Sorry, it's my good fortune to associate myself. in my own humble way with your work here sir sir and i am this is uh, something yeah. that uh, the devotees want you are here by popular request and popular demand and popular almost agitation i have got so many letters saying uh, we'll enjoy the interview with anil kumar so that is what is i'm spurred. grateful to you sir hmm. for giving me this chance hmm. and i very much love to be here Again, wonderful again, that's again. what i want and i am sure the devotees would love to hear you say that you. now having given a promise yes i will keep my <laughs> well, promise you better keep it yes. okay thank you thank very you much sir. sai ram sai ram sir, sai ram, sir.